Hello my friends, I'm Chris Oatley. I'm a professional character designer who answers your questions about concept art and illustration at chrisoatley.com. And in this video, I'm going to talk about what you should do when portfolio feedback doesn't make sense. CTNX, the Animation Expo, the highlight of my year, is coming up in the next couple of weeks and I'm sure you're all getting your portfolios ready and uh, you're, you're kicking your printers right about now. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, I just, so I just wanted to make this video to just help you get the most out of the portfolio critique experience, and I'm sure you'll have many of those at the Expo. The first point that I wanted to share with you is that uh, you don't need to get a portfolio review from every single person in the animation industry. Okay, uh, uh, I see this a lot at CTNX. I see artists running around like crazy to uh, try and collect, collect them all, you know, uh, collect a portfolio review from every single person that will even talk to them. And uh, you, you, don't, you don't need to do that. I, that will just confuse you and exhaust you. Uh, here's a good plan. Start with the people that are doing the job that you want to do. Okay, so if you want to be a character designer, start with Jose Lopez and Florian Satzinger and um, uh, Jeff Wamaster and, and me. Uh, and, you, and you can't forget Steven Silver. He gives the best portfolio reviews. So hi, highly recommended uh, that, you, that you get one from him. But um, yeah, but the point is, is that you don't need a portfolio review from everyone. You need the right kind of portfolio feedback. Of course, you're also going to want to get feedback from art directors and from your fellow artists, and when it's just going to naturally come up in conversation with certain people, and, and that's fine, but just to focus yourself and keep yourself sane and, and keep yourself from just getting exhausted unnecessarily, uh, uh, start with the people who are doing the thing that you want to do. The second point that I want to make is that you have to consider the source. Uh, Artists are going to give you a different kind of feedback than HR representatives and recruiters. And that's nothing against HR representatives and recruiters. They're some very good friends of mine. But, uh, but we just generally think uh, very differently. And we're going to give different kinds of perspective uh, on, on portfolios. But what do you do when whoever it is that's talking to you uh, is giving you feedback that doesn't make sense? Or uh, that you don't know, this is actually the, the, the important part. Uh, it, it's you're listening to the feedback and you don't know actually what to do with the advice that is being given to you. To be fair, uh, sometimes it is just bad advice. Uh, we all do it. We've all given bad advice or, or just advice that we just haven't thought through very well. The conventions are exhausting and uh, we're not always fully mentally there. And so, so sometimes it's just going to be bad advice and uh, that, that could be part of it. But with artists, we often don't know how we do something. We just do it. And uh, this, this, again, this is not an indictment of the artists. The job is to do the art, right? The job isn't necessarily to teach or instruct or explain. Here's an example from Malcolm Gladwell, the author of Blink, which is a book that is amazing, and I highly recommend that you read it. Uh, uh, all artists should read it, really. Well, it, Anybody, everybody should read it, it's great, uh, but to artists in particular. And uh, there's this story that Malcolm Gladwell tells about this tennis player who is known for his awesome serve. And I guess he has this like really great serve. And he's trying to explain what makes his serve so good, what he does. And he's saying, you know, when I, when I serve, I, when the ball connects the, to the racket, uh, I roll the racket over the ball. And uh, he's trying to teach some people how to do this, and it's not working. That the serve, they can't replicate the serve. And he's like, roll the racket over the ball. And uh, then they go and they take him into this motion capture studio, and they, they mocap him doing the serve, and it's the exact same serve, and they mocap the ball and everything. And what they found out from the motion capture feedback is that the, the roll motion that he's explaining happens after the, the ball connects with the racket. Okay, so the roll actually has nothing to do with the power or the direction or the accuracy of the serve. That action is what the students were, were focusing on, but it's actually, it actually has nothing to do with, with the actual serve itself. So the thing they're trying to perfect is happening, he's telling them to do it as the ball connects with the racket, and that's wrong. That's not what even what he's doing. So, so there's a perfect example of how we often don't know 
how we do it. We don't know how we do it, or we think we know, and we're wrong. Now, here's the animation industry equivalent of roll the racket. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is a bit of portfolio advice that has just gone viral in the animation industry. And I've heard it. My subscribers have written me, and they've, they've heard it, and they're confused. My students have written me, and they've heard it, and they're confused. And quite frankly, industry friends, this virus must be contained. We, we've got we've to shut this down because it makes no sense, and it's confusing people all over the world. And uh, uh, the statement goes like this. You need to put a greater sense of storytelling into your work. You need to put a greater sense of storytelling into your work, okay? Now, this is a particularly tricky uh, uh, kind of portfolio feedback because it sounds like something you can do, all right? It sounds actionable. Uh, also, it has the word storytelling in it, and the word storytelling is like a drug to anyone in or breaking into the animation industry. We just we hear that word, storytelling. Yeah, that's what I want to do, storytelling. Oh, yeah, 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 storytelling. And so it just kind of makes us stupid for a minute, you know? And uh, we, we just go a little bit nuts. Uh, so, so it has that word in it. Also, the feedback virus often starts with these three words, you need to. And it, that sounds authoritative. That sounds so emphatic, it's easy to just just assume that any confusion that you're experiencing is your fault because they're saying you need to you need to do this you know put this and then you're you got the storytelling drug going on and 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 then you're hearing you need to and oh yeah i need to do that i need to and of course we do who doesn't want to put a greater sense of storytelling into our work whatever that means it sounds like a good thing okay so um so so that's that's why this statement is so uh, uh problematic so whether it's this greater sense of storytelling thing or it's something else that doesn't make sense or if it is your fault, if you zoned out for a minute because you're exhausted from the convention and you just stopped listening, um, or if it is just plain old bad advice, you can do the same thing in any scenario. And that is, take responsibility for your own artistic growth and help them communicate with you by asking follow-up questions. Here's one follow-up question that you can ask, and it might be the only one that you have to ask, and that is, what is the one next specific action that I can take to blank? Whatever the confusing advice is. So with the storytelling example, it's, what's the one next specific action that I can take to put a greater sense of storytelling into my work? And now the fog clears. The abstraction is solidified. And in a very polite and even impressive way, you break them out of autopilot uh, with your really thoughtful response. What's the one next specific action that you can take? Because that's what you need to know. You need to know what you can do you need to know what to do when you get back to your studio and you're sitting there in the big blank piece of paper and you're sitting down to work, you need to know what to draw. You need to know what to research. You need to know uh, what to read or what to watch. You need to know what to do. So whenever there's portfolio feedback that's vague, usually it's uh, someone is asking for an effect. They're, they're asking you, to, you to, to make work that has a specific kind of effect on them. And that this storytelling uh, concept is, is no exception. When they say they want a greater sense of storytelling, that they mean that they want to get immersed in the work. They want it to feel like a movie. And really, that's code for be a concept artist, be an illustrator, because that is the job of the concept artist or the illustrator. The problem is, is that's not a clear path. The problem is, is there's nothing specific in that statement that you can actually do. There's no next step. That's just, that's the abstract effect that the work has after it's done. It's not telling you how to make the work. Now, for those of you that are interested, this is exactly what I teach at the Oatly Academy, and you can go to chrisoatly.com, 
forward slash academy uh, to learn more about that. I have a course called Painting Drama, Composition and Color Theory for Concept Artists and Illustrators. So it's the, the rock solid ancient fundamentals of visual storytelling applied specifically for concept artists and illustrators. If you have questions for me, that's my job now, is answering your questions uh, at chrisoatley.com. Uh, but you can go to digitalpaintingkit.com and that will take you to my email newsletter page where it talks about my email newsletter and you get a free digital painting kit of all kinds of cool digital painting goodies uh, uh, when you subscribe. And then you can reply to the emails that I send out through my uh, email newsletter and, uh, and ask me any questions about anything, really. One last thing please share this video. Share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, send a link to a friend in an email. Uh, whomever you think it might help or encourage, please share it with them. And, um, you know, like I said, this is my full-time job now, doing the Oatly Academy and answering your questions on chrisoatly.com. That's my full-time gig, and it's going great so far, but the only way to really build a lasting, long-term business is with your support. That's the only way it's going to happen. So please, please spread the word. Thank you so much for listening. Find me at chrisoatly.com, and uh, good luck at CTNX.